welcome. We're going to do a staged reading of The Age of Loneliness. How many of you have seen staged readings at the Art of Management before? Quite a few. Great. So you know what the rules are. For those of you who haven't, let me go over the rules again. The important things to note are a staged reading, there's very little rehearsal. The cast has less than five hours of rehearsal time. So rather than a normal theatrical production with a couple months of rehearsal, we have less than five hours. Scripts are held in their hands. They haven't memorized the lines. There's no scenery. And what all this means is that unlike a, a normal theatrical production, the audience is asked, engages in a suspension of disbelief. With a stage reading, it takes much more than that. It takes active belief on your part. That is, you must believe there is scenery. You have to see the scenery in your mind. You must believe there is no script, that the actors aren't carrying them around. You just have to let that go. And perhaps most importantly, you have to pretend that we don't make any mistakes at all. Because <laughs> trust me, after five hours of rehearsal, we will still make mistakes. <laughs> we will make plenty of them. So that's your job in this. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the play. The first thing I want to say is the music is all written by Klaus Springborg. Yay, Klaus. And, and in fact, pretty much all the music you've been listening to as you came in was written by Klaus Springborg, the incredibly talented Klaus Springborg. So this play, how many of you saw The Invisible Foot at the Art of Management in New York? Quite a few. Well, that was four years ago. And at the end of that, I was um, not satisfied with where the play ended. It was an ending of a play, but it wasn't thematically, it just didn't, I wasn't fulfilled. I felt like I hadn't dealt with the big, the big issues. So I wanted to. So now, four years later, I set about writing act two of The Invisible Foot which turned out to be called The Age of Loneliness. And that's what you're really going to see. So the big issues that I didn't deal with were, I was fundamentally interested in what happens in a post-growth society. How does capitalism function and exist? How do capital and Yahweh and the market relate to each other in this environment? And in short, I feel like I was, I was trying to write this play to Satisfy the big issues of our times. You know, what economic system comes next? And here's a surprise. I don't think I succeeded. <laughs> it's, uh, sadly, I wish I could tell you, here, I have the answer. This is what we should do. But instead, I have my struggle. And as a result of that, I don't really know what the play's about. I'd like to tell you what it's about more, but I don't really. And I, I look to you. I would encourage anyone to come talk to me tonight or tomorrow and say, hey, Steve, I know what the play's about. It's about, you know, it's about, Steve, it's about your own failings as a middle-aged playwright. It's about <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever you think it's about, I want you to, you know, go ahead and tell me, because I, I am deeply curious. You know, I'm also interested in I'm feedback, both good and bad, things you liked about it, things you hated about it. And again, so find me. We're not going to do a discussion afterwards, because I think we want to just let it sit in, go have dinner but I do want to hear from you. So as I said, the play starts at the end of The Invisible Foot. For those of you who didn't see The Invisible Foot, the story, and since it's been four years, most of you probably don't remember the plot details <laughs> in particular. Um, the main character, the protagonist of the play is the playwright, June. And the playwright starts to have success with her play. She starts to actually get people coming to see it and she makes money and it grows and she becomes addicted to this growth and addicted to this success. And the play, so what we see is the playwright, and we see the play that is being successful on stage. And the play on stage is The Adventures of Yahweh and Capital. And in The Adventures of Yahweh and Capital, we have a parallel story where capital is addicted to G, or growth, and market is capital's dealer, providing G. And we have, so we have, goes through growth, and, goes, and then it's the classic addict story, where you can't get too much, and finally capital hits rock bottom. And indeed, it happens for the playwright as well. And at the end of the play, it's gotten to the point where the playwright is 
talking directly to the characters, interacting with them directly rather than being on stage and separate. And the characters have thoroughly abused the playwright. They've thrown the playwright down on the stage and decided that they're not going to continue and they walk off to go have a drink somewhere. So this is where we start the play. Our playwright, June, played by Anna Pasilla, has laying on the floor of the stage. The characters in the play are Yahweh, your Alpha and Omega, your one and only, played by Sam Warren. Satan, played by Tatiana Kimmy. The Market, Marky to his friends, played by Nick Nisley. And of course, Capital, or Cappy, played by Alan Owen. So I give you the age of loneliness. So that's it? You're just going to lie there? Well, seems like a good plan to me. Beaten, defeated, the suffering artist. Comfy, unconcerned about what others think. And why? Because other playwrights are better than you? Because other plays are better than your plays? Bite me. No, not because they're better. You were doing okay at the box office. You had butts and seats. You were winning. Oh, leave me alone. Marky has a point. Oh, oh God! Oh, oh, no. You're thinking of Yahweh, not me. But I can see how can you make that mistake. I can't. <sighs> I don't think we're at all alike. You really want to go there? Could you all just shut up and leave me alone? Of course we can't, you know that. Uh, what would your therapist say? Would she say that you're a loser? That's not helpful, Marky. Dr. Jones would say that you need to understand and come to terms with us. You need to control us. Oh. Don't see that happening. Nobody controls the market. That's the whole point. When did you start referring to yourself in the third person? Everybody does that these days. Satan thinks it's cool. It's, crap. it's a lousy, lousy dialogue. Don't, it sucks. Don't I say suck. that. Don't say that. Oh. I don't think you suck. Yeah, I know. You love me. You love all. Does anyone fall for that these days? Seems to work for Dr. Jones. I heard she's buying a new boat, a Riva. Take control. Be the playwright. Write us. Control is an illusion. You know that making art is all about not having control of where you're going. It's about the departure, not the destination. So why try? Just give in. Be the playwright. Okay. Maybe I don't have any choice. That's my girl. Once more, into the breach. Mm, she. That's what I mean. That line worked for Shakespeare, but for me, it's just a hackney cliche. You'll do better. You'll do better. Just oh. that. I should be happy, I've got it all But I feel so crappy, I've hit the wall Even with money, there's still a huge void The richer I get, the more paranoid I should be happy, I've got it all But I feel so crappy, I've hit the wall The faithful, they love me, they really do but they don't love each other, only the few. To be happy, I've got it all. But I feel so crappy, happy to walk. Oh, please! I've never seen a bigger group of babies. 
You're gods for crying out loud. Could you maybe act like it? Yeah, you're gods. Quit complaining. You were singing with them. I was making fun of them. Come on, Marky. You know that. Leave us alone, Marky. Yeah, we don't need any of your stuff. Of course you need it. Once an addict, always an addict. That goes for the both of you. Yeah, you're addicts. Gee, addicts. You know where to find me. Do you know, sometimes those two really piss me off. Yeah, me too. I didn't know you were unhappy. I didn't know you were either. So, we have that in common too. Yeah, we do. So, do you want to talk about it? I, I don't know. There's not much to say. I mean, I tell them to love each other. To do unto others as you would do, have them do unto you. I mean, I don't know how many more ways I can say it. Kids, they never do what you'd say, do they? I guess. But you expect them to grow up eventually. Yeah, the long arc of history, bending towards justice. I was hoping that it was bending towards love. Maybe it is. Not fast enough. Maybe I'm just getting old. Yeah, get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah, get off my lawn. <laughs> it was fun singing together. Yeah. So how about you? What's up with the paranoia? What do you mean? Did you hear something? <laughs> from, from you? Right. Well, it's nothing. It's probably just some of the lingering effects of withdrawal from the magic G. So you've been clean? Well, mostly, uh... Well, okay. Some. I'm trying to be better. I'm not perfect. Maybe a little growth is okay. It's better than okay. It's still G. There's still that rush. There's still that hit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, maybe Mark is right. Maybe we're just pathetic addicts. We're all sinners. None of us is perfect. I thought you were perfect. I think if I were perfect, then the world wouldn't be in such a mess. They might actually love one another. Yeah, well, you gave them free will. You gave them choice. Did I? But I also made them with the hope that they would be better than this. I thought that if they had free will, something really special would happen. That they would learn to act lovingly towards one another. Well, they do sometimes. Not enough of the time. Maybe they just need a, a little more time. Maybe I need to start over. Another flood. Mm, promise not to do that again. Well, what are you thinking? How about climate change? Mm. Rising oceans. Yeah. It, it's different to flood. Mm. Crop failures. Famine. Well, that's pretty hard on everything else. Pretty hard on you, you mean? No, I meant on the animals, the plants. And it'll be worse for the poor, those who you claim to love the most. <sighs> it always seems to work out that way, doesn't it? You always hurt the ones you love. See, that's what I mean about them not having done that great a job in creating the world. The system should punish the guilty, not the innocent. Easier said than done. I know, right? This whole God thing is harder than it looks. I know. I mean, I really thought that I could do some good. And you have. I... Fewer people die from hunger. Mm. More people have decent drinking water. Mm. And there's blockbuster movies, which are really cool. Yeah, well, so what was the idea with waterborne parasites, anyway? <laughs> and video games, they're really cool, too. Oh, thanks. Parasites are my creatures, too. They need some place to live and prosper. Oh, that's a point, yeah. Really? This is supposed to be a love scene. Well, I'm feeling the love. <sighs> I thought it was going pretty well. You're supposed to be sex seducing capital. I know, I'm getting there. You were doing really great, then. And I'm really feeling the connection. Oh. Oh. So, you were seducing me. Oh, seducing is such a creepy word. But you were feeling more connected, yeah? Yeah, so? So? Maybe it could work out between us. It feels kind of awkward. I know what you mean. Being so open and explicit. But, um. Satan. Where's Satan? Where's Satan? You two make.
made me want to puke. I mean, after all the years you were together and you finally break up and, and now you want to get back together? Mm -hmm. And even when you were on a break these past few centuries, you weren't really. We all know about the booty calls. Why? We all I know never. what was going on. You always. I don't have to stand here and be insulted. You can kiss and make up later. You always do. What was all that about? Oh, come on. You know you're better without Yahweh. Remember all those centuries when you were together? It wasn't a partnership of equals. It was always Yahweh first and you second. You've done a lot better since you split up. I don't know. I mean, to the degree that you really have split up. It makes me sick when, you, when I see you try and get back together. Because nothing has changed. It's still Yahweh's show and it's never going to change. I don't know. Oh, you may be rich, but you have a bitch. You could be the one man outside the sun. But you're a poodle, just a little noodle. In all that you do, you're the number two. I had so much oh, always no. Is not very nice. <laughs> Come on, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> That's nice. I don't know what it has to do with your story, but I do like a bit of singing. Mm, sometimes you need a different approach. Not every, everything can be text. Or subtext. Thank you. And audiences like musicals more than just straight plays. I don't know that a couple of songs here and there really makes this is a musical. Sure it does. But I don't like musicals. They are too fluffy, not serious, you know. Come on, Breck wrote the Three Penny Opera. Uh, but he called it a play with music. Tomato, tomato. Ah! That's becoming your catchphrase. Ah! <laughs> what a surprise. Always nice to see you too, Yahweh. Where's your poodle? I'm on my own today. Then maybe you should be on your own. Don't be that way. I'm really quite fond of you. No, really. <laughs> I admire you. I can't wait to hear where this is heading. I think of you as the Procter and Gamble of religion. And it's absolutely brilliant. No other god creates in-house brand competition. Brand competition? Yes. The Muslims, the Christians, the Jews, they're all yours, right? You're the Alpha and the Omega of them all. They're your people, your customers, in my language. I suppose. You are the God of Abraham, but you've created these different brands that compete with each other, just like Procter and Gamble, where the different soaps they sell compete with each other in the market. It's good business for them because the competition makes everyone sharper, keeps them on their toes. And for P&G, they win regardless of which brand wins. Not everything is a brand. And the competition thing that you've got going, I mean, the wars and killing, further than I would have gone, but uh, that's why you're Yahweh and I'm just me. Don't push me, Marky. Like I said, I admire you. Do you know how much it pains me when my children kill each other? One on one is horrible, but mass murder in my name is an abomination. Tears my heart and fills my soul with a horrible, icy void of despair. Really? The Crusades did that to you? Yes. Hmm. And the Holocaust? Yes. Hmm. And the 9-11 World Trade Center things? Yes. My children do unspeakable things to each other in my name 
when all I ask of them is to love one another. Wow, so it really must suck to be you. Yeah, I suppose it does. So if you don't mind me asking, why did you make them that way? Why even have different competing brands? I don't want to do this anymore. Really? This has stopped being fun. I know what you mean. So, I need a favor. No. Hear me out. I know where you're going with this, and the answer is no. Kill me. No. You're the playwright. You can kill off a character. No! I can't kill Yahweh. It could be suicide. You want to kill yourself. Have you even been listening? It sucks to be me. I don't want to do it anymore. Hey, when the going gets tough, tough got uh, going. You call that writing? Mm, but you've got so much to live for. Like what? Um, How many more will be killed in my name? Uh, how, about, how about your personal life? It looked like you and Capital were getting along pretty, pretty well earlier. You that could, could, could uh, be going someplace, if you know what I mean. You're really going to go there? Uh, Are you saying this play is really a romance? The story of Yahweh and Capital falling in love? Yeah. That happened a long time ago, and it didn't work out. Maybe that's what makes it. Such a great story, a failed love rekindled, lost love found. You don't have the guts to do it, do you? I don't think it's a question of guts. It takes real courage to kill off a character, especially a main character. Mm. You don't have the guts to do it. I could. Bull I could do shit. it. Yahweh yeah, language. <laughs> How would you do it? Mm. See, you're pathetic. Mm. You look a little down. Yeah, I guess. Do you want to talk about it? You're a therapist now? I like to think of myself as a facilitator, <laughs> helping to make things happen, whatever that takes. Whatever that takes. So what's got you down? I don't know. I feel a little aimless, I guess. I mean, it's nice to be the one that all the economic rents come to, but somehow <clears throat> it feels like something's missing in my life. Did you have a fight with Yahweh? I wouldn't say that. Hmm. Well, I'll tell maybe, you. Maybe. Yeah. I'll tell you, Yahweh, she's no good for you. We've all seen it. Yahweh doesn't love you, at least not the way you deserve to be loved. Yahweh loves everyone. So, that's what you want? Polygamy? To be part of the harem, or do you want to be special? Because you are special. You are capital. Mm. The one, the only. Mm, nice of you to say. And you deserve someone who appreciates that. Mm. Someone who will love you for you. Someone who will love only you. You have someone in mind? No, I'm just saying. Well, it's nice of you to say. Maybe I'm not such a bad guy after all. Well, I wouldn't have said you were a bad guy. Maybe a bit of a bully. Always the joker, Cappy. Wasn't joking. Alone again. Hi. Hi. Why are you so down? Oh. I think my relationship with Yahweh is over. Oh. I always thought Yahweh was wrong for you. Are you only telling me now? You can't say something like that when you're together. Yeah, I suppose. The problem was how Yahweh sees the world. Hmm? Wants everybody to be better than they are. Hmm? All that love your neighbor stuff. I mean, sure, that would be great, but it's just not realistic. No? You, on the other hand, 
You're at your best when you count on people to be greedy and self-centered. When you let people be how they are. Yeah, but people aren't all bad. I'm not saying they are. I'm a, what I am saying is that the system works better when it's based on people's baser instincts. So, when they are good, that's fine. It doesn't screw anything, anything up. But on the other hand, when you base the system on people being good and they are bad, it screws everything up. You see what I mean? I guess so. Hmm. Look, people are complex. Behavior mm -hmm. is overdetermined. Mm -hmm. So, in any system, some of them are going to behave in ways that you don't expect. The key is to make the exceptions not be problematic. So, it's better to be a pessimist and pleasantly surprised instead of being an optimist and being consistently disappointed. Exactly. And that's why capitalism works. Mm. That's when you work best, when it's simple and all about making money. Mm. I say, financialize everything, and then we can have a nice straightforward system that works the same for everyone, and everyone understands it. I see your point. It's what makes you what you are today, which is great. It has made you great. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I would. I just did. Oh. Thank you. So, do you want to get a drink? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. This is probably a no, bad time I, I, for you. Oh, what with the breakup and all? Yeah. Forget what I said. No, 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 I'm okay. I mean, maybe a drink is just what I need. Really? Yeah. Great. I know a little spot. Okay. So, I'm alone. I guess that means this is the time. No, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't mean that, definitely. So, how shall I do it? Don't, 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 don't do it. Well, clearly you don't have the guts to do what it takes, do you? Uh, so I'm left with no choice but to do it myself. Uh, uh, you don't have to do it. Pills, a gun. How does a god kill herself? I think a gun. And being a god, I can create a gun. Okay. If you have to kill yourself, at least come up with a better way than shooting yourself. I mean, that's really weird. You're the playwright. Write me a better way. But I don't want you to do it. Then a gun it is. No, no, wait. Wait for what? How about you and Capital? I really think that could work out. We're broken up. But are you really? I didn't really see a breakup scene. I'm tired. I'm tired of that whole on again, off again thing. It's just not going to work out. Maybe if you give it a chance. I don't think so. Maybe there is someone else for you. Oh, Marky! I hate that little bully. Marky's lapdog, Satan. Let's face it, I'm alone. And I will always be alone. Maybe being alone isn't so bad. I'm lonely. Let's face it, you're lonely. You can't even write fictional characters who manage to connect with one another. Uh, maybe. So, goodbye.
I did not want that to happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're a fickle one, a wain and tricky one. But I love you anyway. Yahweh, Yahweh, oh Yahweh, you were my biggest foe, but still I loved you so. I hate that you went this way. Yahweh, oh Yahweh, a lie I will not tell. You dumped me straight to hell. I will celebrate this day. Yahweh, oh Yahweh, it's true what Nietzsche said. You were already dead. Let's get on with the play. Yahweh. So, who's next? What do you mean? Which of you is going to kill yourself next? Not me. I'm loving life. Yeah, I'm pretty happy too. Cappy? What? Can't we just be sad for a little while? I'm going to hang out here <laughs> with Yahweh for a bit. With the body? Yeah. You got a problem with that? No, it's a little creepy, but whatever works for you. So, this is what it's come to. Just me and the minor characters. Hey, that's not nice. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern were so cool, Stoppard wrote a whole play about them. Well, I'm not, not stoppered. Uh, but you want to be. Bite me. Ah. Oh. So, here we are. Yes, here we are. You know, nature abhors a vacuum. Indeed. As do I. Indeed you do. And do you know where there's now a giant vacuum? Do you have a point? Yahweh's death has created a giant power vacuum. You might say there's a job opening. Deity to three major religions. Oh, I see where you're going. And? Yeah, well, I'm, of course, flattered. And I have to say, that's, I never wanted these. Except for that time when you tried to overthrow Yahweh. Oh, well, yes. And I think you could really take advantage of that brand rivalry. Push the Jews, Christians, and Muslims to new heights with some friendly competition. Yeah, it doesn't need to be friendly. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> you think I could really do it? Why not? I just wouldn't rush in and have them hang all the crosses upside down right away or anything. Yeah, well, not right away. You really don't even have to tell them that Yahweh's dead. Ah, I could just feel right in and be Yahweh for them. But in your own satanic way. Yeah, I could tell them that the best way to love each other is to love yourself first. It would be your will, and they get rich because they deserve it. Yeah, and you can't share your great wealth with those less fortunate if you don't have great wealth to start with. So the path to heaven is paved with personal ambition. Yeah, they will like this so much better than all that crap about loving the least amongst you. <laughs> we'll call it... Prosperity theology. I like that. And what's the way to prosperity? Uh, you, of course. <laughs> trust in the market to work. So when they worship Yahweh, they'll really be worshiping you, and really they'll be worshiping me. Delicious. You're taking this pretty hard. Aren't you? Ah, uh, yeah. I've never had a character commit suicide on me before. You know, the Americans put on their money in God we trust. Oh, I'm sorry. And you've just left Yahweh here. No funeral, 
No burial. Just lying here on stage. No, hey, the song was sort of a funeral. It's not right. It wasn't my best song. We need to get Yahweh off stage. I know, I just don't know how. I think Draghi might work. Ah, oh, don't we need a motivation? In a play where yeah. the playwright talks directly to the characters, you're worried about the dramatic reason for dragging the body of a dead character off stage. Okay, good point. Come on. All right. I'll take this. Hey, that hurts! Whoa, is this a resurrection? No, I refuse to be resurrected. Ah, that was a Jesus thing. Oh, well, never say never. Even dead, even dead, you're a pain in my ass, Yahweh. <sighs> so, what now? I don't know. If Yahweh can die, that means the rest of us can too. I suppose so. I don't want to die. Sure, who does? Hmm. But you have to admit, it raises interesting questions. Oh, like, um, who would give my eulogy or whether you'd do another song? I was just thinking what would well without capital B. I don't want to find out. Or a world without capitalism. I don't care, and I don't like where this is going. What would happen if you stopped getting all economic rents? If maybe other players in the system got their share? Their share? You mean my share? I'm just saying it, it raises interesting questions. What would happen if no one ever saw your plays? Is a play still a play if it never gets performed? Are you still a playwright if your plays aren't performed? I thought we were talking about you. What's the difference between someone who writes plays that aren't produced and a crazy person howling in the wind? Okay, 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 I get it. You don't want to die. I can't die. I don't know about that. You can't kill me. You haven't got the... Whatever it takes. Oh, I killed Yahweh. Yeah, Yahweh wanted to die. If you kill me, your play's over. Oh, I still have the others. Maybe, maybe the problem isn't me. It wasn't Yahweh, and it isn't the others. Maybe it's you. Ah, you're going to shoot me. Maybe. This sucks. I suck. Ah. So, how are you doing? I don't know. Yeah, the suicide is hitting you pretty hard, huh? I guess. I threatened to shoot June. <laughs> Really? What do you think would have happened if you did? I don't know. It would have been like one of those time travel paradoxes. If June dies, do all her characters just cease to exist? Can a character kill their playwright? Maybe that's how that Pirandello piece happened. Maybe what the six characters don't say is that they have killed their playwright. I think Pirandello went on to write plays after that. Maybe it doesn't really kill the playwright. It just kills the playwright for that play. Ah, that's why I like you. You make me laugh. Mm, didn't hear your laugh. Well, it was more of an inward guffaw, but I can't say I like you because you make me guffaw inwardly. Mm, fair enough. It's easier with you. What do you mean? With Yahweh, it was always like, use your wealth to help others, uh, do more, be better. Yeah. No, not really my thing. No, you don't no. nag me. I'd like to think that I love you for who you are. Ah. I don't think you've ever said that to me before. Me and you. Nice to hear. Mm. And I'm not against doing good. 
I think Yahweh's goals were admirable. Oh. I'd really like everyone to be happy. I just think the way to do that is through going out and trying to be happy. If that new giant flash screen television makes you happy, go ahead and buy it. If those new shoes would make you happy, then you should have those new shoes. Yeah, and you shouldn't feel bad that your happiness means you're not spending that money on trying to help someone else that's less fortunate. Exactly. Looking out for number one is not a crime to be punished. Exactly. And that's the message I'm putting forth. I'm picking up now what you're laying down. But who are you putting your message out to? To all my people. Oh, okay. Well, I guess they're all your people, in a way. Mm -hmm. I mean, my followers. Oh. I've taken over Yavid's job. Oh. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, we kept it on the down low. I haven't said Yav is dead now and Satan is in charge. I don't think that would have gone too well. No, I don't mm. think it would have. Yeah. So, I've just stepped in, kept all the bells and whistles the same, left the organizational structure the same, just assumed the role with minimal disturbance to the daily routine. And when the time is right, you'll let them know. Mm, I suppose. Well, it's in a name. They call me so many different names anyway. Is Marky behind this? I'm my own god. This has Marky's fingerprints all over it. I don't have a problem with that. I'm okay with Marky. Yeah, that was Marky's idea. I knew it. You knew what? That you could get us both some excellent G if I took over Yavi's job. True that. So this really is a dream come true for you. How do you figure? You've finally taken your rightful place as the supreme being, the one that we all worship. Oh, no, that's not me. That's our friend here. And really, just in Yavi's place. Yeah, you don't buy that. And you, of course, they worship you. They name the whole system after you. Yeah, they do, but they worship you. They worship me. In their ritual, in their words, but in their actions, they worship our friend here, the market, the real, the one, the true God today. Oh, oh, come on, Cappy. You're still a God, a very important God. And they still worship you in their actions, as you say. Oh, really? It's me that only gets lip service and in the name of Yahweh that... Let's not quibble. Between the three of us, we run the world. When you there put are it... no other gods that matter. When you put it that way. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that. No! This is all wrong! Wrong? How so? I think market's point is hard to argue. Capital, the market, and my interpretation of Yahweh, or maybe homage to Yahweh is a better term, we are the three gods that matter. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. But that's how it is. And you wrote it, so I don't think you can complain about it. That really doesn't seem fair. Look, just because I haven't been able to get you to do what I want, does it mean I have to be happy with what, what, what is going on here? I think it means precisely that. What did you want to happen? Does it even matter? I don't think it can happen if you can't even say it. No, that's not how theatre works. It doesn't matter what you say, it matters what the characters do. It matters how they struggle and make decisions. Trust me, this whole play has been a struggle. Yes, sir. I know, and I am so tired of it. Then end it. We don't really need you. We're really quite happy without you. But are you happy without us? I am not happy with you. Maybe you should worry less about being happy. Oh, I don't worry about being happy. I don't even think about being happy. Yahweh is dead. Satan is running the monoistic religions. People everywhere wor wor worship uh, the market. And you, Capital, you're still addicted to growth. No, no, no. I am not 
worry about being happy. Felt a little mean-spirited? I haven't even begun to be mean. I don't like the tone of your voice. So, let me tell you how it's going to go. You, capital. You going to start caring about something other than yourself. And you, market. You going to go back to serving others. You going to find ways to work with things that really matter in this world and not just those things that can be monetized. And you, Satan, you going to, you going to really, really take seriously your new role and you going to resurrect Yahweh and preach, preach love and connection to each other and the world. I refuse to be resurrected. Mm -hmm. If Yahweh refuses to be resurrected, there's nothing I can do about it. That's Resurrection 101. Look, you are my characters, and you have to do what I say. That simply is not reality. 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 We are not dealing reality here. Mm, there is always a reality, and you have created this reality. Oh. That's what you've got? Ah! Capital, you know what I'm talking about here. You miss Yahweh. You want to do good. I don't know. Yes, you do. I'm sure of that. I think that deep down... Marky and Satan, they're my people. They're my own. They're my homies. Mm, that's nice. I've always felt that way too. So, I think this is okay. No, you have to want more than this. You have to want more than them. No. no. Yes, yes. Yes, you do. No. I'm the playwright, damn it. I don't. I did not see that coming. We don't seem to have disappeared. So I'm capital, bitch. Did you see that coming? I did not see that coming. I was a surprise. I and we don't seem to have disappeared either. So at least that question is answered. Yeah, I, I didn't really mean yeah, her any harm. Yeah, you killed her. I, I didn't mean her any harm. You killed her. You didn't mean to? No. You, you don't know your own strength. So what now? So now we're three. Yeah. What's, what's now? The three musketeers? The Troika. The big three. Yeah. Well, whatever the point is, the point is that we're in charge and we don't have to worry about what Yahweh says or what June wants. We could just do what we can do what we want. Yeah. Isn't that what you always do? Oh, baby, you haven't seen anything yet. I've been constrained. Free and name only. Give me real freedom and just sit back and watch. That sounds good to me. I, I think I can help with that. I can hear the message now. The will of God is delivered through the invisible hand 
of the market. I like that. Little do they know that in reality, what most people will get is the invisible foot of the market right up their backside. <laughs> the market giveth and the market kicketh you in the ass. And I win either way. And we all win either way. Yes, indeed. The big three are in charge. Yeah, this is great. And I see how both of you really benefit from this. Market gets to be worshipped, and I think this is what you really wanted all along. I wouldn't call it worship. Well, what would you call it? You could get the neoliberal consensus. Exactly. Yeah, and capital gets growth. You just keep getting fatter and fatter. Yes, I do. Yeah, and it looks good on you. Ah, it really does. But what do I get out of our partnership? You get their souls. You get them to stop caring about each other, to talk and think in terms of what can be counted rather than what matters. Mm. And you can only manage in what you can measure, and management is next to godliness. Yeah, mm, I see that, and don't get me wrong, that is all good, but I, and I do love that. But is it enough? But what else do you want? Well, everyone talks about the market, and they named capitalism after capital, but I have to go around pretending to be Yahweh. That doesn't feel like an equal partnership to me. I never suggested it was an equal partnership. So I'm the junior partner? Look, I made you what you are today. Don't forget that. I don't know about that. Why do you think Yahweh committed suicide? That was you. I don't want to brag. Oh, come on. I've been working on that for a thousand years. I don't think either of you should be bragging about getting Yahweh to commit suicide. That was just plain not nice. Since when do you care about being nice? <laughs> really? You've been pretty much of an asshole to the world's poor for as long as I remember. Hey, I don't have to take this. What are you going to do about it? Give me a break. You can't shoot the market, or me either, for that matter. You're Why in not? Too, you're Why in not? too deep. You're in too deep. You need us. You need both of us to keep growing. You need us to stay on top. Yeah, well, maybe. But that doesn't mean I have to hang out with you two. And then there were two. He'll be back. Oh, of course he will. And you, you'll settle for their souls. Why? Because just like capital, you don't have any other choice. Mm, you can't blame me for wanting more. I suppose not. But I don't have to like it. Oh, come on. We're two peas in a pod, you and me. I don't think so. Just because it's just you and me here, doesn't mean that there is a you and a me. It's me, and you're my bitch. Mm, I don't know about that. You don't have to, because I do know about that. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't care. So that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Well, then the hell with you. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. 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 Thank you.